Tsar Nicholas II gave this beautiful egg to his consort 100 years ago to mark the 300th anniversary of the Romanov dynasty. The Fabergé egg is part of the Romanov hoard, the treasures and symbols of a family that made Russia great and influenced European history for centuries. Paul Edward Kulikovsky is a descendant of the dynasty, a great-great-grandson of Tsar Alexander III. Oh, I feel a lot of pride. I'm, I'm very happy to see this. It, it's amazing to see all these beautiful artifacts. Not only are they beautiful in the sense of uh, artwork, but also the, the spirituality of these items, the emotion that they give me. Um, and, and of course, they're related to, to my family. So for me, it's also family history. So, so for me, it, it's a great joy just to walk through here. Moscow is the city where the czars were crowned. But the Romanovs' history started in Kostroma, several hundred kilometers to the north. Yevgeny Kulagin organizes a festival every year. Here, he's recounting the story for some Swiss visitors. It was in the Impachev Monastery that Mikhail Fyodorovich was elected as the first Romanov czar. At the time, Russia was being torn apart by civil war and foreign invaders. The Romanovs used cunning, skill, and brute force to make Russia stable and powerful. That ascent began in Kostroma. You get a good sense of how much happened here. You can feel this long family history, this long dynasty. And that a lot of important decisions were made here. Kostroma thrived as the young Russian Empire expanded. The city became one of its most important centers of commercial and cultural activity. But Kostroma is not just about the past. Yevgeny Kulagin and a team of friends set up an art project called Stancia, meaning station, in a former factory. Once a year, he invites artists from across Europe to take part in a dance festival. Catherine the Great and Peter the Great and the other Romanovs always had an open European view of everything new and progressive. And modern art is always progressive. I think the czars would have liked what we're doing here. Today, the czars' heritage plays only a minor role in Kostroma, and Moscow is paying little attention to the Romanov anniversary. But the treasures of the Kremlin speak for themselves. Uh, there's still a lot of important artifacts in the diamond front, which of course is also in the Moscow Kremlin, but they are not really part of this exhibition. So actually there is a fourth place here in the Moscow Kremlin that you have to go to, even though it's not officially part of the exhibition. It would have been nice to see all the crowns just lying next to each other, so you could see them sort of in a quick sequence. But Paul Kulikovsky is just glad that so many Tsarist treasures survived the Russian Revolution and the Soviet era. They'll be on display at the Kremlin until the end of January.